Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Wealth Bootcamp, and I wanted to share something with you. Um, I just heard a story not too long ago that actually inspired me quite a bit. Um, I was talking to a, a former bootcamp student uh, who was telling me about uh, the reason that she decided to take the class, and she was saying that she, um, she said, you know, Dr. Boyce, I was I was six months pregnant, and I worked for this bank, and and uh, it was a good job. I was making good money, and out of the blue, out of nowhere, uh, they let me go, um, and she said that uh, I was shocked uh, to hear this because I didn't expect it and we were just about to have this baby I just bought a house and I had the baby coming and she said um, you know she said I was just stunned that they would do this uh, at this time without any consideration whatsoever for what I was dealing with what I was facing the fact that I was a single mom um, and in case you don't know the average cost in America of raising a child is about a quarter million dollars so uh, if you've got a house that's say a quarter million and a baby that's going to be a quarter million that's two mortgages you're going to have to pay and that don't even count the other kids you might already have the other financial responsibilities you may have the student loans you may have etc and so she said I said well how did you handle that that sounds devastating and she said um, she said, I held my head up high. Uh, I didn't, I didn't let them see me fold and, or go off. And I walked out of that building and I got into the car and I cried my eyes out. And she said that, um, going through that as a pregnant woman who just been abandoned by your source of financial security. Um, she said that th at that point I realized that there was no way I was ever going to do this again. I was ever going to go through this again, that I was ever going to depend on the corporate plantation ever again to take care of me. And I said, good. Um, it sounds to me like you turned your worst nightmare into your your glorifying moment, your strongest moment, your shining moment. Um, and that's kind of how life is. Um, when I think about my own life, um, the times where I literally grew the most and evolved the most were, were the hardest times. Uh, I had a I had a dark dark year um, where I I just it, it was like basically your life is kind of chopped into two areas you got your personal life and your professional life and so and if those two things are not going right it seems like everything's going bad and for me that's where I was I was about 27 maybe 20 yeah about 27 and uh, I you know I my, my my relationship had just died I'd been with this girl for so many years it was it was really a painful breakup um, and then on top of that my my educational my program academic program wasn't working out and by that time I had spent so many years in school I picked up the equivalent of, a, of three master's degrees because I was trying to get to this PhD thing and I thought I was almost done and it turned out things were falling apart even then because there's a lot of politics um, in, in a lot of these programs and in business schools that are very conservative finance departments driven mostly by white males I don't really always fit that well with white males because if, if, if a white guy gets out of line I don't have a problem telling him the truth about himself which can get you in trouble when you're in the white man's house and that's one of the reasons I talk very clearly and honestly about uh, understanding that you know when it when in Rome you're going to expect it you're going to be expected to act like the Romans so uh, when you run your black butt up into that white man's building understand he's got a culture he's got a, a, a set of priorities he's got a territory that is his you're in his territory you must follow his rules in a certain way and if you don't follow his rules you might make it but there are going to be consequences uh, at that time I didn't understand that entirely uh, but I figured it out and when I figured that out I said okay I'm gonna get the hell out of your house I'm gonna go build my own house I want my own I want my own space I want to be my own man you're not going to control my life and um, and so uh, you know when this with this woman who told me about the pregnancy and losing the job and everything else and how everything just seemed to fall apart um, since that time she's become an entrepreneur she's become a much stronger more successful person uh, she's learned to overcome things in a certain way uh, she's learned uh, not to depend on one stream of income to take care of her you never ever ever allow your oppressor to pay all the all your bills and feed your children uh, that that is something that we were fed since birth and that is absolutely positively the wrong way to go about being a black person in America it is it is a it is a ticking time bomb uh, a ticking here's an, here's another example of a ticking time bomb you uh, this uh, this used to happen back in the 80s you finish high school and you say well maybe I should go to college now nah, why should I go to college I can go work down at Ford I live in Detroit I can go work at Ford and make $30 an hour with a high school diploma well what happens when Ford is gone what I mean, can you go find some other job making the same amount of money? Um, it's very difficult because the manufacturing base in the United States is gone. Um, you don't have skill. You don't have education. You don't have training. Uh, you don't have options. Uh, you will be stuck. So um, the point in bringing all this up is that I was I really admired this woman's story. It inspired me. I thought it was something worth sharing with other people. Uh, the second thing about it is uh, it, the second point in all of this is that you know when you're going through those dark times and those tough situations. Uh, face it head on, head first, go at it. 
Use that as a challenge for you to grow. That's how you grow. You go through hell. You go through hell, and then next thing you know, your feet can withstand a little more heat because you don't walk through the fire. You understand? So you can't have wisdom. You can't have strength a lot of times without going through some pain. Uh, so when the pain comes, try your best to embrace it. Move forward. It'll make you stronger in the end. Third thing, uh, don't depend on the white man to pay all your bills. No disrespect to the white man. I have to always say that because you got these these black people that say, oh, you're, you're a racist because you said that you don't want to depend on white people. No, hell no. You don't depend on nobody. You're not supposed to depend on other people. That's not how that's not how a strong nation stands. You don't see countries that are just overly dependent on other countries very often. Sometimes they are. And when they do, guess what? They end up bending over whenever that other country tells them what to do. When they say jump. They, they're just saying massa how high right so for the black community we don't need we don't have to do that and you certainly don't have to do that in your own life um when i learned how to run my own business and have my own life um i learned that i could stand up to people and not be afraid of the consequences i didn't i wasn't scared of corporate america i'm not scared of liberals or conservatives i'm not scared of white people i'm not even scared of other black people and so at the end of the day um when you create options for yourself you're better able to live and breathe as a free human being. You get a taste of what true freedom really feels like. So, um, so just stay strong. And and then the oh, the last and most important point is is not just not allowing your oppressor to pay your bills and feed your children, but also you want to have more than one source of income. Uh, you there's you never have job security if you've only got one job. Uh, and she learned that unfortunately the hard way uh, when she lost that job uh, with, with this big bank that had given her all this money and everything. So, um, so you know everybody the it happens to the best of us uh corporate america does not love you they will not stand by you uh if they decide they need to cut costs they will not care that you have children they will not care uh that it's going to devastate you so make sure that even if you're in corporate even if you choose to stay there i'm not knocking you for staying there i'm not even knocking you for working for white people i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that i'm saying there's something wrong with not having options there's a difference right uh there's a difference between negotiating and working with somebody because you choose to and the it versus working and being with that person or being around that person or in that system because you have no other choice so always make sure you have a choice and you have choices by planning ahead but if you follow the system that they've given you if you do what they tell you to do if you follow the default model you will end up in an economic trap and you won't know how to get out so uh, that's all i want to say i'm dr boyce watkins from the black wealth boot camp uh you can feel free to check it out it's at the black wealth um the students love it we've had over 25 businesses come out of that boot camp in the last four or five months alone uh we keep a black business registry so we can help and support these businesses as they grow so uh we really are helping people get off the corporate plantation so go take a look uh take care god bless i'm gone peace